I, I never set out, Luke, to try to make uh, a lot of changes. I think it was just more trying to um, identify what we needed, uh, address that, and then further address what were going to be the, uh, the impacts of that relative to the salary cap, player injury statuses, and different things of that nature. Um, so in, in a perfect year, I think you would go in and feel you didn't have to do anything. Um, but in this era where the cap isn't really grown, you take the summer, you try to uh, address things as best possible, and then you take the first... 40 games and, and really try to measure where you're at and take as much time. I, I do have a lot of faith in, in what I've seen from the players when they're outside of the lens of the public and, and we're together that they could handle bringing uh, some new guys in. And, and one of the new guys has, has been here before and knows a lot of the staff and I think has a reputation as one of the better character quality people in, in hockey. And so they, they've, they've kind of come in and both in terms of how they fit in and how they played so far have all, have all uh, seemed to have settled in quickly. But and there's always going to be some, uh, some rocky steps and, and games when you're so new to, uh, to an organization. But, um, you know, at, at, as we got past that, those moves on Tuesday, it became, okay, do we want to further the chemistry part did come into focus a little bit more in terms of wanting to say, okay, now we have to let it settle and let these guys roll. We've addressed what we think they need. Now let's let them and the coaches get to work. Mm -hmm. Comfortable, obviously, I guess you are comfortable yeah. with your goaltending going forward. Um, how do you view that position and, and where it fits? Yeah, the, the way I view the position is is this. Uh, I think I've um, in, in going back to previous availabilities. I, I'm I'm very confident in in uh, in our goaltenders. Ilya has come in. The things we're looking for from from him would be how would he respond when things weren't going well, uh, and how would he recover when he got into bad stretches like any young goaltender, and he's done uh, an excellent job of that, especially he had that stretch mid-December, he bounced back strong in January, um, and then one, if he's had any games where he struggled, he's, he's right away uh, been able to stop that and, and get it rolling the other way. Um, so he's, uh, with him, it's, we've been very happy with Matt Murray's health. Obviously, he's been out now for just over a month, and now he's on his way back. And then Joe Wall um, has been one of the, you know, he's an all-star in the American Hockey League um, and has come in here and played well in the games he's played for us as well. Um, so um, we're very comfortable with the three. And then we have Eric Shelgren as well, who ended last year as our backup. So um, when looking at it, I, I think the, the question is, um, how confident are you that, that they can do it uh, in in the end and pull through, and I think you know Matt has done it in the past, and there weren't really other guys available that that have, and we believe in the potential of of Ilya and Joe both. So we'll get Matt healthy and get him rolling, and and uh, let the three of them continue to to uh, continue to move it in the right direction. So the question is, despite all the great moves, did the Toronto Maple Leafs do enough? Okay, so so we we had a bunch of trades leading into trade deadline. I think a lot of people, myself included, thought they probably have one more move left in them. They did get a first for Rasmus Sandin. Steve, Jesse, what do you guys think? Is this enough? Oh, well, I mean, it's a lot. It's look, a lot. Looking at the team, you go, what a great team! It's great. They were great before. They're even better now. What a great team! Can they win around? And you go, sure. Absolutely, they can win around. And then you look at the team who they have to beat to do it, and it's Tampa. And holy crap, <laughs> they got better. They got Tanner Janot for a King's Ransom. We'll see how that works out. And I got to tell you, if it does work out, uh, I don't think Julian Brisebois has ever won GM of the year. He should win it. Well, he should. Well, he has won it twice. The Cup. The Cup. Stanley yeah, twice. Cup. Yep. But there is a GM of the year award. What's it called? Exactly. But the, he's won the Stanley Cup twice. And that's his GM of the year award. And uh, he went out and uh, got Eastmont, who, Michael Eastmont, who the Leafs supposedly wanted, according to the CJ show. And you would know that if you listen to the Chris Johnston show this week. It's been on fire. So the thing that disappointed me the most um, wasn't actually the goaltending. It was the left wing. Mm. Um, they didn't improve there at all. Unless you call adding Ryan O'Reilly – improving that position because it moves John Tavares over. Yeah. I mean, the Ryan O'Reilly uh, acquisition does offset that somewhat because of uh, the versatility that it gives the team mm -hmm. and Sheldon Keith, the blender that he used against Calgary was really something to watch. That was a lot of fun. Can you talk about the pairings that, that we saw that we weren't expecting? Well, you can use uh, bunting Matthews Marner or Nylander. You can use, 
Uh, Tavares, O'Reilly, Nylander, or Marner. You can use Yarncroke, Tavares, Nylander, or Marner. You can use O'Reilly with Matthews, who's the center you take your pick, and one of Nylander or Marner. We saw Tavares, Matthews, Marner, which they have used in the past to varying degrees of success. Um, we saw O'Reilly with, I think O'Reilly might have played with every forward on the team. Uh, seriously. <laughs> So it, it gives them a lot of versatility because you have arguably, arguably three first line centers at worst. You have one first line center and two second line centers. Mm -hmm. And I think that's at the absolute worst. Jesse, you've been on the Ryan O'Reilly on the third line uh, as a centerman because it, you know, the Leafs come at you in waves. Mm -hmm. Would you be comfortable with given the success of the third and fourth lines with Nola Chari there? Um, Lafferty hasn't been long enough, I don't think, to, to really make right. that call. Can't really judge. Noel Achari made an immediate impact, scored goals, that sort of thing. Are you okay with Ryan O'Reilly on the second line? And, and then you just go, well, screw it, we're top-loading it, and the third and fourth lines look pretty good anyway. Yeah, because it's not hard and fast. Ryan O'Reilly is second-line center all the time. Uh, Sheldon Keefe, that's his thing. Like we, You just mentioned the whole entire Calgary game. He loves throwing the lines in the blender. So I'm fine with if that's – this is the lineup that the Leafs have. Like, there's no change in it. If that's the lineup, it's fine because – Sheldon Keith's going to mix it around. And, like, judging Dubas is, okay, did he do enough? Like, I, we need him to exhaust every resource this year because this year there's no excuse. You can't lose again in the first round. So you have to do all that you can do at this trade deadline. And look at it. Okay, so did he do all he can do? And it's like, we want a goaltender. We want a left winger. What? Who's out there? Yeah. Can they get it? And, and it was you, a pretty thin list. I'm trying to run down the list of the guys who were traded today. And oh, there's not... Oh. No, never mind. Sorry. I thought I saw a breaking trade. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Keep going. And oh, there's, no. not, <laughs> you. there's not the name. There is not the there's name. There's not like all the goaltenders out there. There's not a goaltender. I'd be like, he should have done. Maybe Corpus Salo he should have done. But you know who we forgot about in our winners and losers video? Who's that? Me. I'm one of the biggest losers because Karel Vimelka. Ah, did not get moved to anybody. I forgot about Corral. And he didn't become a Leaf either. The name, the names aren't really out there to fit under the cap. Like he couldn't do Timo Meyer plus Ryan O'Reilly plus all the other trades he did. You know, it wasn't. I think he exhausted everything he could do. And for that, I say, good job, Dufus. Okay, now the question is, what'd you call him? Dufus? Dufus. Dufus. Uh, question is goaltending. <laughs> Sammy struggled a bit lately. Obviously, he was a little bit sick. Uh, Matt Murray has played 19 games, which is just under the 20 games he played the previous year. Uh, apparently now, and according to Puck Petey, who just actually DM'd me, uh, the Leafs have $4.85 million of cap space in LTIR after they activate Murray from LTIR and then assign uh, Joseph Wool to the minors. They'll have about a million dollars in cap space available, which will make uh, signing Matt Nyes possible with three thousand five hundred dollars left on the cap wow which is pretty nuts and their 50th contract slot yes yes so and that's probably you know that's that's probably what they're banking on it's a lot of people part of what necessitated the angle deal but let's talk about the goaltending situation first mm -hmm. and then we'll talk about matthew nice duba said at the press conference he said he's completely comfortable with the goaltender specifically he was talking about sam sonoff mm -hmm. um he mentioned joseph wall in there too he, he did he did are you completely comfortable here's the problem uh i'm totally comfortable with this team's goaltending for the regular season they're four guys deep mm -hmm. if you don't like shelgren three samsonov has been more than fine better than any of us could have hoped uh honestly even murray has been <laughs> better than i think a lot of people hope and joseph wall i think is straight up ready i think he's straight up ready he looks for the good NHL. shelgren gave them some good games this year uh, I have full faith in the Leafs goaltending for the regular season. It's the playoffs. You're going up against likely Andre Vasilevsky. And let's pretend you beat the Lightning. Then you're probably going up against Linus Ulmark. And, and Jeremy Swayman. And Jeremy Swayman. Who is not <laughs> in case he gets injured. Yeah. Right? And then, okay, let's say we end up in the Eastern Conference Final. And, oh, hey, Freddie. Or, oh, hey, Igor. Igor Shesterkin, right? It's in all three of those series, the Leafs have the second best goaltender, right? And that's kind of the most important position. Uh, what's what's the Jeff Merrick one he always likes to use? Hockey should just be called goalie. Yes. 
<laughs> Absolutely, it's a good one. I like that a lot. Um, <coughs> yeah. Uh, um, if you have a goal, a good goaltender, it's seventy percent of your game, and if you have a bad goaltender, it's all of it. Duba Something said like at his press conference that he had the choice of picking another draft pick or Eric Gustafson. Uh, why did he go depth power play quarterback uh, who didn't look particularly great last night, but it was his first game with the Leafs? Why? Uh, oh, you're asking me why? Yeah. Why do you think? Uh, because he's got a different idea of what is and isn't a good move than I do. Because I don't think it makes any sense to hold on to Eric Gustafson. Okay. Uh, lastly, Matthew Nice, and I think this needs to be repeated, repeated, repeated. You know, the Leafs, clearly, if you're going to pick weaknesses, you probably look at their goaltending and go lack of experience there. You might be a big believer in their goaltending, but you can't deny. The last time uh, any roster goaltender for the Leafs got a win in the playoffs, it was 2020. Um, and that was Matt Murray. So that's that's a little bit like, woo, okay. So then... Matt Nye's coming in and playing left wing. There's a couple of things at play here because he's been well-hyped. He's a Toronto prospect. Of course he has. But the other thing is, even if he wins the Frozen Four, which is what we're hoping for, he'd have three games on the road to acclimatize himself with the Leafs. No guarantees the Leafs are even holding home ice advantage for the first few games of the playoffs. So it could be... It's looking good. It's looking good, but mm-hmm. if, if they could lose it to Tampa. Tampa could go on a tear. Yeah. Um, and and so then Matt Nyes plays his first five games of his career, three at the end of the regular season, the first two away from home. Um, in a you know, and making that jump from the NCAA to the NHL, how reasonable is that to expect of this guy? Yeah. Not incredibly reasonable, but it's maybe a risk that you simply have to take. And consider this he's not gonna be going from house league. To the National Hockey League. No, it's NCAA. It's not only NCAA, but the playoffs. And like winner take all playoffs, right? Like Frozen Four is crazy. Right? You're going there and you win. Hooray. Glory. And if you lose, GTFO, you lost. It's done. So if anything, he's going to be playing uh, all or nothing games before the Leafs are. So hopefully he can come into the lineup with that attitude he's got something to prove so he's got to go directly from winning a championship to proving he belongs to then trying to win a stanley cup hopefully the leafs know about enough about this guy that they are confident he'll be shot out of a cannon i have so little faith in a guy who has the same amount of nhl games as me you know and him coming in and not because he doesn't have the talent to eventually be good right you know what so does connor bedard yeah exactly no, not exactly. <laughs> so You're it, allowed to be a good player who hasn't played in the NHL yet. All I'm saying is we're putting a lot of faith into a guy who's coming into the Toronto Maple Leafs, has never played a National Hockey League game, has never played with this team, has never practiced with this team, and expecting him to step in the lineup, and you're trusting Matthew Nyes over the forwards that you have now. Like, shouldn't the forwards we have now have a shot at at those positions ahead of Matthew Nyes? They should. Like, but... taking him and just dropping him into the second line on this team ahead of the Tampa Bay Lightning seems like a really, really tall a- task for this kid. Uh, look look to our biggest rivals. Uh, P.K. Subban's first NHL games were in the playoffs. He did pretty good for the Habs. And uh, in 2021, a big reason why the Leafs got sunk was Cole Caulfield. So you never know. So you're a believer. I, I... I'm, I'm not, I'm not believer. saying it can't I'm happen. forcing myself to believe. Okay. <laughs> I'm not saying it's impo- I'm not saying those scenarios aren't entirely possible. I'm saying it's a lot for a guy who's played zero National Hockey League games. Oh, oh it's impossible now? Great. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. Good job. If you want to know what you think? Leave your uh, leave your comments. Did the Leafs do enough? Did they do more than enough? Did they overdo it? There are people out there who are like, "Well, they've just messed with the team chemistry." Well, Adam I know you're trying to end the video perfectly. No. But have you considered Bobby McMahon?